Hello everyone, welcome back to another RL Craft episode. Today we're going to be doing a special segment on the top 5 items a mid player should have that are a must for pretty much anyone and are pretty easily attainable. So I'm not going to go over any items that are things that are either a super rare drop or just considered end game. Some of these things will touch pretty close to end game content but these 5 things should help you get there. Maybe not alone but combined they should be pretty pretty handy. So stick around uh, we are actually going to start with my personal number one favorite uh, just to not make you guys wait through this whole bunch the entire list but please stick around to the end and I will also be talking about some bugs and how to fix them in the game and just some tips and tricks uh, because I have come across a few myself recently and I want everyone to have a good time and experience. So so let's start with actual bugs in this game. So if you ever get to the point, or if you do get to the point where you have a dragon bow, specifically just a regular dragon bow, and you get to the point where you're trying to shoot it and nothing seems to work, you have, I, ha I personally right now only have arrows, right? But then you go ahead and you make like specific arrows and you try different kinds of arrows and it's not shooting anything, right? No matter what you do. Well, the problem is that for regular dragon bows, you need to specifically craft dragon bone arrows. And once you do that, it shoots just fine. Apparently I took damage from something. I have no idea. Um, even if you have the full agility, full attack, full defense, you will uh, need dragon bone arrows in order to pull a dragon bow. However, there's an exception to this because if you have a certain enchantment, and I believe I've, I've narrowed it down to multi-shot, if you have multi-shot on your dragon bone arrow, you can actually shoot it just fine. The only problem is that, if, if, as you can see, the accuracy on this thing is god awful. Look, see, like, my cursor is shooting straight and the arrows are just kind of going wherever they want. So if you're willing to risk some accuracy for multi-shot and so you can use regular arrows on your dragon bone, then by all means do that. But if you're just trying to do single shot, make sure it's accurate and everything, you are going to have to craft dragon, ar uh, dragon bone arrows, which is far more expensive since you do require actual dragon bones to craft those things but that is what it is um another thing is so disenchanting and disenchanting uh tables you used to be able to have multiple disenchantments disenchantments right here so this used to be able to turn into a multiple disenchanting table but for some reason in the newer version of rl craft you don't have that option so even if you were to turn it into a multiple uh disenchanting table like i have here this is supposed to do multiple enchantments for one for one slot um but for some reason it doesn't work just know that even if you were to craft one it's not going to do multiple disenchantments all right, so now on to the number one item that I absolutely love in this game, and that is the thing you see around my neck, my, around my neck. Half-hearted stone of the sea. And this thing is one of the absolute best items you can have in the game. It is not super god tier or anything, but it is just so convenient for absolutely anything you want to do outside of land. It, it is the best method of traveling and it'll save you so much heartache when trying to cross oceans because even if you were to fall down and everything this item alone allows you to breathe underwater and allows you to fast travel through water just on its own and I know that sounds kind of meh but it's infinite breathing underwater. You don't get sight underwater that you would need this full serpent armor for that but it is so convenient. Right now Thanks to the, the item right now, I can go this fast. And it is absolutely, it is the best method of traveling for me at the moment. Without any of my enchantments alone though, I still go a decent amount. It is way faster than if you were to just have nothing equipped. But even this is a, a tangible amount and having extra enchantments to increase your speed is not that hard. So yes, Stone of the Sea absolute must anyone who wants to travel and have a good time without flying or just traveling through land the whole time or boat definitely definitely get a hard stone of the sea the second item for any traveler goes hand in hand is an atlas i mean compasses are fine and other methods of traveling are fine 
but ultimately you are going to want to get an atlas and these are pretty common items now in towers if not they are craftable all you need is a book of quill and a compass and you'll get an empty antique atlas and a book and quill all you need is a feather an ink sack and just a book so very easy item to make but it's an absolute map must if you are trying to explore the world around you because it is massive like ginormous and you are going to want to want to know where you're at at all times because if you're like me and you die away from home you're gonna end up in places like way over here and it's gonna take you hundreds and hundreds of minutes uh just trying to figure out where the hell you are and never be able to find your way back home because that is a pretty massive world to explore if your base is way down here and you're stuck way up here my advice honestly if you don't personally believe uh that you should only play one mode go on creative fly around for a bit and just discover the maps don't do anything just you know unlock areas and stuff and mark it down and then you'll have things that you'll want to do and eventually you'll go and visit those places on survival mode um, that is what i did to uncover all these areas and these are all super fun looking and I will eventually get to all of them, but you know, it's, it's a massive world and I'm trying to tackle it one by one. Atlases are your best friends. Just do not lose them because once you lose one, you're going to have to start all over. So keep them as a very, very priced possession. All right, number three on the list. And as you can tell, most of this is for exploring and not so much dungeon hunting because dungeon hunting should be something you are slowly trying to do at mid game because that is the best way to get resources at a very quick pace especially experience experience is such a huge deal in rl craft so dungeons you're so slowly trying to build your armor and stuff but really anything will do but it's it's the extra equipment that you have that makes a huge difference so in this case you have the grave scroll um, which if you die if you use this grave scroll you will return to your death location which is super super handy if you die let's say out here in the middle of nowhere or if you die in a semi safe place in a dungeon but you weren't able to you know make it out quite alive so let's say you you had no other option than to jump off you know the side of the tower and you end up dying from fall damage it, this would come in super super handy because most monsters do not spawn out here and you'd be able to recover your uh your items just by teleporting to this thing now keep in mind the monsters in that area will still be around so if you're coming back with a teleportation scroll make sure you have some armor and some weapon to fend off those monsters if that's how you if that's how you died this, as far as I can tell, this works better than the home teleportation potion because this actually works anywhere in the world, as far as I've tested at least. Whereas the home teleportation potion, which I, oh, the home teleportation potion or the recall potion, it says it, it teleports you to your spawn point, but after a certain chunk distance. So Wiki doesn't say that there's a limit on the distance that a recall potion se uh, says that'll work but there is definitely a limit because after i'm gonna do an arbitrary number here i'm gonna say 16 chunks your recall potion stops working and it'll teleport you to a random place in the world so again this is why an atlas comes in huge handy and a teleportation potion is good for close close places like if you're trying to do a quick getaway but it's not going to spawn uh respawn you to your death location and the grave scroll like i said as far as i can tell will spawn you back to wherever you died fourth on the list and this one is a little bit further down because it is actually extremely hard to get but it is so useful it'll cut down on the number of bandages and just health potions that you need in order to survive dungeons it is not the best healing method uh, as far as you fighting monsters very frequently and you're getting constantly hit down but it helps a huge amount whenever you have a moment to take a break and you're just doing casual things after you've taken damage and that is the regeneration potion uh potion ring sorry and so the potion ring is one of these super fun rings it's also the most expensive ring you can craft if you are at that point in the game 
So you are going to need a nether star. This is the one of those things that is going to be super rare. So if you're lucky enough, a dungeon you come across will have a nether star. And I've only come across one nether star this far. And you need cast tears. So cast tears and the actual potion ring are easy to come across. Nether stars, on the other hand, are pretty hard to come across. So that is why it's further down on my list. But yes, this thing will heal you... So you can see on the top left of my screen, every nine seconds, I'm getting healed. And that's just, it's half a heart for every nine seconds. So it's not the fastest thing in the world, but whenever you have downtime and you just need to sit and sort through your chest or whatever in the middle of a dungeon, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good source. Um, pair that with vampirism on any of your weapons. Uh, like for example, my halberg here has lifesteal, lifesteal four. You are almost never going to go down unless you get absolutely hoarded by monsters all around you. Or you just have a really, really, really high level opponent like a dragon coming at you. So some honorable mentions before we get to the number five is going to be fire potions. Fire potions are the absolute best source of defense for when you're trying to go up against dragons. They are not gonna stop you from taking me melee damage or blast damage, which is caused by the magma uh, block that they throw as an explosive. But any sort of damage that they will try to inflict on you with their fire breath is gonna be uh, negated because of this fire potion. So that is a huge, huge, huge chunk of damage that is just absorbed through that potion because because of its effects. Um, you will still take armor reduction effects. So your, your armor will still deplete a little bit, especially if you have things like burning thorns and just thorns in general. Anytime your armor casts its, its ability, it uses some of, it, some of its endurance bar. So keep that in mind. Another honorable mention is gonna be a backpack. Backpacks are pretty easy to come across. Um, super, super handy. Nothing more to say. They're just pretty convenient. Okay, last thing. So another honorable mention, and this is going to be something I don't expect everyone to have, but because it is some, a really rare item to come across, and this is, I believe, only a drop. But the Stone of Greater Inertia, if you can ever find one, yes, it's going to take a little bit to get used to at first, but the amount of speed it provides. So this is me trying to go as fast as I can across the hallway. The amount of speed it provides just on this thing alone is ridiculous. Like I said, I wasn't going to put anything on the top five on rare things that you can't get, but the Stone of Greater Inertia is such a game changer whenever you are trying to do close combat with any monster because you can easily approach them, attack, and then go back. And you can just keep doing that method a long period of time. Also, if you combine this with speed armor and stuff, you can easily around, uh, outrun any dragon's breath that comes at you. Dragons are pretty good shots and they do throw fire at a very rapid rate. So having this thing in your inventory is such a great, 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 great thing. Okay, so last but not least, is something that I used to have and no longer have. And it's not necessarily an item, Though, I think it's only specifically found in boots. And that is a quality of point or half, depending on how you want to look at it, a step. It's just a footstep. But what it does is whenever you are going across blocks, um, instead of getting stopped, it actually moves you up on its own. So... I used to have this on diamond boots, but I lost someone fighting a dragon and I no longer have them, but what? that's a different story. So anyways, so you can enable in one of your options and one of your options to do auto jump and you can have that on back to game and it'll automatically let you jump. But it is it is different than having a half a step because whenever you jump, whenever you're running that momentum that you have gets lost so you have to you have to hit the control key if that's the one you use for running again in order to uh, reactivate that running thing with half a step you can automatically step over that block so that you don't 
have to lose that momentum when running away from enemies or just running in general through terrain. So it is extremely convenient, um, especially in dungeons when it's like a one block thing and you're getting stuck, getting stuck trying to outrun enemies and such. It is also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on agility, you get Hillwalker. Uh, once you max out agility, you have the ability to step climb. And so this, this is similar to that half a step, but you know, getting to 32 skill levels is it, it takes a minute right like i have one 32 skill level and i've i've beaten countless countless dungeons and uh i still haven't gotten any more max levels but also because the amount of enchantments that i do and the amount of repairing that i do kind of takes up all of that so all of these books are mostly from drops and stuff and even then they've been all filled multiple times and it, it's just it requires a lot so if you don't want to wait until you have max agility to get that half a jump um, so that you're not having to jump every time you come across a block and having to reset your your run ability, um, half a step on your boots is makes a huge, huge difference. So it's a, it's a very simple trick, um, but I think it works really great. It's definitely something that I think everyone should have. So that is going to be it for this one, guys. Um, there are some other things that you can argue should be on the list, especially for mint players. But there are so, so many good tips and tricks out there. Some other simple ones, I think, would fall under like uh, early players, like beginner players. Uh, tips and tricks like having a big shield is the absolute best shield you can have because it blocks any arrows. Whereas any other shield, as cool as they may look, so for example, even Cobalt Shield or this Anka Shield, which is like the most end game kind of shield you can have, um, even those do not block uh, incoming archer arrows, like this Diamond Reinforced Shield or anything like that. None of those are good for blocking arrows because well, it's just not tall enough. Like the game does not consider it a full. Um, I think your character is two blocks tall. And so is the, well, the shield is considered two blocks tall. So it is good for blocking all sorts of arrows, which will prevent anyone from dying from headshots. If you know how to use the shield. Um, these uh, bizarres are great for preventing uh, poison damage, which is a big pain in the butt whenever you're going through dungeons and half of the floors have spiders in them. But all those, I think, are beginner tips and just tricks and items. So I hope you guys enjoyed this small guide of trips and trips and tricks and trinkets and all that good stuff. Let me know if you guys have any other items that you guys absolutely love as a mid-game player or even as an end-game or early-game player. Um, these are just my personal favorites, and I think they hold up pretty well, no matter what part of the game you are in. I know some of these are harder to come by, and that's why they are mid-game and not, you know, early game. But yeah, if you guys have any other things that help you get through mid-game, uh, please let me know down below. Let me know if you like this video in general. I will be making more guides as I like to do. It's just been a very busy, 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 or two months. I will be moving next week again, so that'll be fun. Uh, that's why I wanted to put out three videos this week. So next week, there'll probably only be one video uploaded, but I'll try to make it uh, the best content that I can make it. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you liked it. Uh, subscribe. It would really help. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.